So, you're thinking about making the switch to Linux. Or you already made it, and now you're wondering how you're going to play your favorite games on Linux, or if even you can run those Windows games on the new OS. Well, let's get a few things out of the way right away. Linux isn't Windows. It's not working the same way as Windows does, and when playing Windows games and programs, you have to expect to make some compromises occasionally. That being said, Linux is surprisingly good at running games that weren't designed for it, and it's only getting better by the day. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to run your favorite Windows games using the applications available in Linux. I'm using the Fedora distribution of Linux, but what I'm about to show you works on every distro out there. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to try to run the very first Fallout game, because it's what I have right now on my PC, but it's an old game, so it's a good example of something you might run into. I'm also using the GOG.com version of the game, which adds further complications. I'm going to show you the ways of running it from easiest to most involved. In most cases the first, or second thing I show you will work, but in rare cases, you might need to do more, or you might not even be able to run the game at all. In Linux, you have to be prepared for that scenario. Okay, let's do this. First, before even purchasing or downloading your game, you want to look up a website called ProtonDB and LutrisDB. Links are in the description. These are websites maintained by the Linux gaming community, and they contain tips and tricks and compatibility details about games. Most likely you'll find the game you're looking for in one of these websites, and you'll find the necessary tweaks you need to do in order to make them run. Sometimes, however, you might not find the game you're looking for, or the tips described might not work for you, so just because the website says the game works well, it might not be your experience. And the same way just because it says the game doesn't work, you might be lucky. So, these websites are valuable, but take them with a grain of salt. After checking the website, you're ready to download the game. Now, if you're downloading something from Steam, you might find that it's not available for Linux, in which case, you need to go to Steam Settings, click on Steam Play, and enable Steam Play for supported titles and all other titles. After a restart, everything should be available. In our case though, we don't need Steam just yet, because we're using a GOG game. So the first thing is to install the game. For that, we have two options. We can use Wine, or we can use Lutris. For installing both of these apps, check the links in the description. With Wine, it's just a matter of double-clicking the installer.exe file and following the on-screen instructions. I however don't recommend this method, because there is a better way. Using Lutris, you can install the game with all the other things it needs like DirectX, and .NET frameworks and special custom-made scripts for the specific game, so I recommend doing it this way. So, to install a game, let's open Lutris. In the search game section, let's type in the title. Fallout, in my case. Then on the Sources tab, let's click Lutris, and once you find the game, let's click on it, and click Install. It'll show you all the available versions of the game, just choose the version you have, in my case it's GOG, and click install. It'll ask you the directory you want to install into. Then it'll ask for the .exe installer you downloaded from GOG. Direct it to the installer, and click continue. The installer will install it, and you'll have your game ready to run. In most cases, this will be all you need to do. After this you'll just click play and the game will run just fine. In some cases though, you might see an error message, or you might not see anything. The game might say launching, then it'll just switch back to play without anything coming up, or you might get the game running, but experience performance issues like lag, or textures missing, or something else that makes the experience awful. In that case, you have to continue to step 2, which is configuring Lutris. Right-click on your game, and click Configure. I'm going to show you every setting I apply to my games, but you might want to do these one by one and try the game after each change. The Game Info and Game Options tabs don't need changing, 
So let's click on the Runner Options tab. The first thing you want to take a look at is Wine version. Usually, the default version is going to be the latest one installed on your system, but your game might need another version, so you should try all the possible versions on here, to see if that does something. If not, let's switch back to the default version and continue down. You want to enable DXVK slash VKD3D. This will enable DirectX for games that need it. Then, you want to enable eSync, and if your kernel allows it, FSync. By the way, if your kernel doesn't, you might want to look into switching for one that does, because it's a good thing to have when running games. You might also want to try enabling windowed virtual desktop, it might just be a resolution error, but otherwise let's check out the next tab, System Options. Here the only thing we want to look at is the following. Enable Feral Game Mode. If this is enabled like it is to me, then good. But if it isn't, you need to download it. It's essentially a background utility that aims to improve gaming performance on Linux. If you don't have it, check out the link in the description. Now, if you've done all this and your game is still not running, or is still unplayable for some reason, then we need to ditch Lutris for this game and check out Steam. You might be thinking, I don't have the Steam version, so what's going on? Well, some of you might not know this, but Steam actually allows adding non-Steam games to it to use with the built-in Proton compatibility layer. For that, you need to open Steam, then go to your library, and click the Add Game icon at the bottom, then click Add, a non-Steam game. A window will open. Click Browse, and navigate to the .exe file used to run the game on a Windows system. Then click Add Selected Program. Your game executable will appear among your Steam games. You want to click on it, then click Play. There's a good chance your game will start at this point. If it doesn't, there's still hope. You want to right-click on the game, hit Preferences and go into Compatibility. And click Force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool. If it doesn't allow, you forgot to enable Steam Play before. After you forced it, you should try running again. If still nothing, you can change the version of Proton that Steam uses. Best is to go from the bottom and try every one of them. For Fallout, for example for some reason only Proton 5.13-6 works. If you tried each one and still nothing, you can download a custom version of Proton called Glorious Eggroll. Link in description, and try with that. That also has different versions, so you might want to try a few, see if one works. If that fails too, then I'm sorry to say, but the game simply isn't playable on Linux. If you're able to run the game, but you're still facing performance issues, there are two commands you can add to your launch options. One of them is, game mode run, percentage, command, percentage. This will enable the same game mode we talked about earlier. And the other command is wine, underscore, full screen, underscore, fsr equals one, then space, percentage, command, percentage. This command only works on glorious egg roll versions of Proton, and it's a technology by AMD that came out recently and aims to make gaming on lower spec hardware a possibility. Further details about this technology can be found through the link provided down below. Hope this video was helpful to some people, and if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments, and let me know what else I should make a video about. Also, if you have additional tips and tricks, please let me know. Thank you for watching. And many thanks to Voicemaker.in for the voiceover. Bye.